guys today uh welcome to the stream i'm not quite sure what we're gonna be doing today i think i might kick off february's uh stream um uh, with the love stream a little bit earlier i might do that um it's also lobster's birthday today and i am gonna see play something specific um uh, so we can play together for his birthday of course um but we'll just kind of take it by ear today. Uh, I am late. I am so sorry. I had a going on today, and it has just been a hectic day to begin with. And I'm just excited to kind of de-stress and get into it today. Um, so how are you guys doing? I feel like it's been a minute since we last talked. I hope everyone's doing good. Um, life has been crazy. <laughs> um, just in general, between balancing work life, family life, my streaming career, family again, it's just been wonderful. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's about it that's been going on with me. I mean, work was crazy today, end of the month, so we have to close out the books. You know how that goes. And... The person that normally is there with me to help close the end of the books. Uh, hello, ride with me to McDonald's. Hi, Boonie girl. I would love to ride with you to McDonald's. Um, can you pick me up some Nug Nugs? Because they sound amazing. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, she wasn't there today. So I had to do it not by myself. Someone else came and helped, but... It wasn't the person that usually does it. So, like, all the reports that we have to run, like, didn't get done. Like, they should have. That's just going to be heck tomorrow going back into work. But, you know, it is what it is. Girl, I'm getting a crisp Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Why do I feel that? I'm drinking my crisp ice pop prime not sponsored maybe one of these days um <laughs> it's really good i can't help myself but anyways i think we're gonna play dream daddy and it is something that I have been wanting to start for a while now but now that it's getting into the love month of february which, funny enough, is my birthday month. Um, yeah. I need to try those. I love body armor. It's similar. I've never tried body armor, um, but I watch the Sidemen, which KSI, who is one of the people that made this, um, they, of course, are promoting this on their channel, and I was like, ooh, Prime, that sounds good, and then I seen the ice pop flavor. Like, how could I not? Like, and trust me, you need to try it, because they're amazing. And there's not that much, like, bad stuff in it. Like, I would have thought the sugar would have been high, but there's only two grams of total sugars. But, like, 20 calories total per serving, and serving size is a whole bottle. So, not a bad drink of choice. Especially because I'm trying to stop drinking pop, which has proved to be extremely hard. Uh, but <laughs> I am slowly weaning myself off of it. I'm not trying to cut it out completely because I don't think I could function. I might be able to, who knows, but I, I don't think I will. Like, I have, like, when I go to restaurants, I cave every time. They're like, what do you want to drink? And instead of being like, oh, I'll take a tea or a lemonade or a water with lemon. No, I'm like, I want a Coke or I want a Pepsi, like, now. And then I drink, like, three of them while I'm there. So... So it's one step forward and three steps back. But you know what? I'm trying, and that's all that matters. <laughs> but 
Uh, yeah, we're going to be playing Dream Daddy because I am so excited to play this game. It's definitely a sim. You telling me I'm in the cold getting this dang Dr. Pepper. It's an addiction. And I don't know what it is about just... Oh, hold on. Graphics quality is daddiest. There's dad, daddy, and daddiest. So we want daddiest. Play one left. Display one right. Display one left. Yep. Input. Got it. Play. It's always something different. McDonald's hits different. It might be a little loud until I can turn it down. I have to say this. I forgot the. You know what? I know, it's so loud. Cover your ears. Options. The music. Okay. All right, there we go. Hey, Sander, how are you? So, these are all the choices. What is this game? It's called Dream Daddy, um, a, da a dad dating simulator. So you get to go on dates with the other dads. Yeah, we're kicking it off for February. So, not oh no, oh yes, we're gonna be dating some dads. <sighs> um, so I haven't played it at all whatsoever. Um, I've watched people play it, but I've never been able to play it for myself. Oh, we're sleeping. Snoring, actually. Dad. Dad! <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> My dad's probably going to think I'm calling for him. Uh, wake up, pretend to be dead, five more minutes. Uh, five more minutes. You said that five minutes ago. And also ten minutes ago. Uh. I finally open my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. On and stretch. Morning, Manda Panda. No. Ugh. Yikes, dad breath. Go brush your teeth. Build that dad. <laughs> oh, are we gonna have like a thick dad bod? Or are we gonna be like fit? Can be skinny. I feel like this is my type. Should I go for my type? hanging with my dad but I'll have the stream up you sent me a picture of your mom I'm confused now anyway we're gonna do a crop top and I'm actually pretty pasty Have to be hairy, be, be hairless. What heads? Actually, I think we're gonna build like <laughs> you know the meme of Squidward when he turns into that beautiful 
beautiful. Man, I think we're gonna build that type here. Oh, we should definitely go with man bun. We're gonna go with spaghetti hair. I love the food. The light hair up. Hair down. Oh my god, that's perfect. A little hair flip. No, I think. I think the purple hair is rocking it. But I don't think I want this. Kind of feeling the man one. We're doing the purple hair though. debating between these two. Like, we have to have brown eyes. I absolutely adore I just can't get over that face. We have to go with these eyes. We need a cute little button. I'm getting flashbacks to someone I know. This is crazy. I think we might go with that one. Oh, actually, that kind of fits. Oh, face. Luscious <laughs> lips. I'd kiss him. I like the smirk. I'm between the smile and the smirk. Confident. We're going with the spark. Oh wait, should we do brown eyes, brows? Because like, no, we're doing brown. Brown looks more natural. Oh, ears. person to be able to see because I can't piercing hearing clothing Oh, 
of sophisticated. Oh, we have to do the cats. Alrighty, so now that we have most of the build, let's go back to the body and just make sure. Ah, it just fits. It, it really just fits. Oh, we gotta have that little right here. A little bit of a shadow now. Purple hair just vibes, man. Like, we're going with it. This is our daddy. Or this is actually, this is us. <laughs> we're gonna find us a daddy. It's so icy. Oh, is it getting bad out? This is our daddy. <laughs> Exactly, this is our daddy. Oh. <laughs> be that dad. Oh, what should our daddy's name be? <laughs> I should have ran a poll on this the other day. But I forgot that we got to name what our dad was. It wasn't generated. I need ideas on our beautiful dad, George. Hey, 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 computer guy, how are you? You're just in time to name our daddy. <laughs> we have created the masterpiece. I'm good, wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> oh, that's good that you're doing good. <laughs> um, Yeah, you heard me, we're naming this dad, or naming our daddy, so. It's our dad, and we need to find a name for him. I've seen George. Sir Awesomeness. Sir George Awesomeness. Going with. We're gonna have to spell it with one S because it won't let me put two. Sir George Awesomeness. Be that dad. Be that dad. Oh, it says it. Oh goodness. Oh. This is so cute. And did you fall asleep packing? I got most of it done, I think. Searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait, Draggler, hmm. what's in it? Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos and a little in little photo albums. Hey. Whoa, I haven't seen those in years. I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin looking through it. Aw. <laughs> That's the coolest baby I ever seen. <laughs> The only way your father and I, the only way your mother and I, father, we're going with the bit. The only way your father and I could get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on. Nice. Halloween, when you were maybe four. Oh, look at her in the little dino uniform <laughs> costume. <laughs> Oh my god, that dragon costume. You couldn't decide between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess dragon. Hmm. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? Uh, you saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. <laughs> hmm? Right, yep, definitely repressed that memory. <laughs> And this was you in your horse phase. Oh, look at her. Hmm. Dad. 
I believe you named that plush horse Sir Horsington the Brave. Hmm. I don't think that was his... Amanda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above her head with my superior dad arm. Nice try, but this, import this is an important blackmail for later down the road. <laughs> Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you in your ska band. Ouch, kid. <laughs> ska Munist Manifesto had a chance back in the day. I look off into the distance and reminisce about that rad horn section. Hey, it's Emma P. Ugh. No, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I will never stop mixing those two Ugh. up. Dad, Emma R's been my best friend since I was like seven. Give it like a little bit of an effort. Oh, right. Emma P was the one who <laughs> tried to steal people's pets. Fired a flaming tennis ball at the police station or pooped her pants during a sleepover. We're going with the poop pants. Ugh. Dad, that was me. I did that. Oh. Oh. Hello, oh, poop. Hmm. And I was having a sleepover with Emma R, who isn't Emma P. Hmm. She never told anyone, though. Through blue, that Emma R. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I gotta show this to Emma R later. She'll get a kick out of it. The first photography award you ever won. Oh! Ah. Yeah, and it got us a $20 gift card to McFridays. Fridays. Yeah. And then you got food poisoning from the cheesy tor tor tostada blast. I think you made food poisoning, you know, with a Z. Aww. Dad. Still can't drive past McFridays without gagging. Still proud of you, though. Amanda reaches deep down into a box and pulls out one last photo. Mm -hmm. oh. I love you, Amanda. Neither one of us say a word. Stare at the photo for a long moment. Mm -hmm. I finally decide to break the silence. This was the day you were born. The day we adopted you. It's kind of a funny story. The day we brought you home, we got into a car accident. It wasn't anything big, just a little fender bender in the parking lot. But of course, I was freaking out, and the little old lady who crashed into us was freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. But your father? Oh man. He holds my hand. Yeah, he holds my hand and looks directly in the eyes, the calmest I've ever seen him. He says, It's okay. It's all gonna be okay. Uh. <laughs> he was right, you know. I stare at the picture for longer. Maybe two. Miss him. I can't even imagine what it must be like for Amanda. Oh. She bats me on the back. Hmm. Come on, Pops. We gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. You're right. Mm -hmm. Amanda and I pile into the car and take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. It's hard to believe your father and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. Hmm. Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? I always had very strong arms. <laughs> hey, remember that? Remember when I shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? You were very, you were a very imaginative child. <laughs> hey, remember when I broke the back window? Put, we get it, Amanda. You break stuff, <gasps> and there'll be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. I met someone like that recently. Can't imagine life without them. Oh, well, who's that? Well, if you want to share, of course, you do not have to share. And that is a very nice feeling to have. Someone that you can't imagine life without. And there'll be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. Sparkle creates? Never heard of them.
They stream too. Oh no. Kel's looking them up. I don't know what you're talking about. I would never. <laughs> well, that's awesome that they stream too. <laughs> Memories to make and stuff to break. Oh. You ready? I sit in silence for a moment. I watch my daughter grow up in this house. It'll forever hold a place in my heart. It still stings a little bit to leave behind. I'm ready. Moving begins to pull away and I get the car into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear into the rear view mirror. Are we the daughter? No, we're the handsome dad that we created. This is just our daughter, Amanda. So. What? So sell me on our cool new pad. I clear my throat <clears throat> and do the best cheesy announcer voice. Nestled in a beautiful scenic town, Maple Bay, our new house features. Roger. <gasps> Washer and dryer hookups. Honey, have you ever had dirty clothes? For most of my life, yes. But we'll worry about that no longer as our new place features. <laughs> machinations that will not only clean your clothes, but dry them directly thereafter. An upper class luxury, I fear. The concept of clean clothes is no longer in the hands of the fat cats upstairs, sweetie. So silly, it really is. Anyway, it's also smaller than our last home. Cozier, one might argue. Good spin. Yes. I think it's great. We won't we be closer to a lot of cool stuff that we can walk to, so I don't have to waste gas. And I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know. Amanda, you know you're gonna have to learn how to parallel park at some point, right? Huh? Not gonna happen, pops. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their attitude. I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. Mm. So you won't have to chase any rowdy teens off your lawn. You are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. <laughs> I'm in my last year of high school. I'm practically dust. Yeah, you're a real... Oh. Don't you dare. Senior. Hmm. Dad, I know where this is going. Citizen! <laughs> I'm just gonna ignore that. But I won't forget it. So what's the number one on the new house agenda? Well, first, we'll need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's blocking the living room. I still have to install the washer and dryer. We need to go grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. Pops, pull your jets. We have to pro you have to promise me that we're gonna take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay, you're right. We'll get some work done, then check the area out. Always check the area out. It's so silly, but like when we get into it, like trust me, it's it's great. We pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mowed and for sale sign is still in the yard. Gotta find them hotties. Oh, Boonie Girl, you just wait. Let's say, uh, well, we're gonna have fun looking for the hotties. Ha. hi -ya! And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more. Nice form, sweet pea. Ha. I got a problem with authority. I'm so proud. Ah. Man, all that karate chopping tuckered me out. I could really go for a sandwich. Huh. An ice cream sandwich. Ready? It's 10 a.m. I'm not old enough. I'm not old enough for this game. <laughs> You're not old enough for this game. <laughs> I don't think I'll show any of the not safe for work parts if there's any. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, did you even see all the dogs in the park nearby? You know it. Thank you for moving us to an area where the dog to person ratio is very high. I only want what's best for you. <laughs> I hope you're prepared for the frequency at which I interrupt conversations to yell, DOG! To rock it way up. 
I mean, you do that a lot. Or hey, it's a dog! Oh, no. Wait, false alarm. It was just a funny shaped rock. If you want to see a real dog so bad, let's go to the dog park around the corner. Man and I begin to stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing in the street and the flowers are in bloom. The faint smell of a nearby barbecue drifts through the game. This place is nice. Hmm. Too nice. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. You can never be too careful. See that baby in the stroller over there? Government operative. Hmm. We're on to you, baby. <laughs> we walk for a while and eventually end up at a small park. Toddlers chase each other through the playground, and dogs of all shapes and sizes romp through the grass. Pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench and starts to make her way over to it when... Heads up! Hey! Bam. Ow! A frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. Woof! A corgi! Well, oh, look at the corgi! With a neat plaid handkerchief tied around its neck, bounds up to me, wagging its tail. <laughs> Hello? Did you throw this thing at my head? I like your necktie. Did you throw this thing at my head? Bark! He runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with his nose. Oh god, this is the cutest dog. Oh, thank you so much for the fits, booty girl! And look, it's the same dog! It's a corgi! He runs around in circles, nudges my leg with his nose. Oh god, this is the cutest dog ever. Impart me- uh, Impart upon me your wisdom, tiny dog. Woof woof. Do you have tomorrow's lottery's number? How did you know? How long do I have left? How long do I have left? Grr. What's that? I'm already too late? My fate was predetermined for me a long time ago? I have no real agency in this cruel lifetime? Rough, rough? You're right. I am the master of my domain, for fate is unknowable. Thank you, wise dog. Arf! You definitely could have caught that. I, oh, wait, I gotta do different voices. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes the frisbee from me. <clears throat> I have a feeling he has a very burly voice and this is going to get very uncomfortable for everyone. Hey. You know, frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands and not your face. Well, you're traditionally not supposed to aim for people's heads. It's a new technique. I'll catch it with my teeth next time. I like this one. But I'm fine. Thanks. Hey. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I'm Brian, by the way. I'm Sir George, and this is my daughter Amanda. You look over at Amanda only to find her sitting on the ground rubbing the dog's tummy. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Your dog's cool. Ah, uh, old Maxwell sure loves attention. It's great to see another father and daughter out here on such a sunny day. Where's yours? Brian gestures over to the grassy knoll where a young girl sits on a checkered blanket. She's reading a book bigger than her head. She puts it down and heads over to us. Hey. This is Daisy. She's reading the brother Car Karmov's. Her teacher tells me that she has the reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. How old is she? <laughs> Ten. She is precocious little youngster. Hey. Oh. Whoa. My natural dad instincts kick in and I must brag about my child's accomplishments. <laughs> Doing good. Oh, thank you. You gotta really get that burly voice. <laughs> Oh no, it's happening. Ah, oh, go on, Daisy. Go on, Daisy. Tell them about yourself. Daisy. Um, I. That's my girl. So, George. Amanda, get in there. Okay. Okay. Oh god. Classic Pokemon. Brag. Daughter. Item. Flea. Brag. Amanda here. Just recently won a local photography award. Wow, congratulations. Brian loses 10 HP. Daisy actually just won a statewide poetry contest. You lose 15. Oh, God. We're gonna brag again. Last week, unprompted, Amanda helped an old woman with her grocery bags. It's extra powerful. Brian loses 20 HP. Daisy just started a weekly chess club at her elementary school computer lab. She's the president too, of course. Dang, my high school doesn't even have a chess club or a computer lab. You lose 10 HP. My HP is 55, his is 50. We're gonna brag again! Uh, Amanda's in all honors classes this semester. Brian loses 10 HP. Oh, 
Really? I'm actually talking to Daisy's teacher about having her skip a grade. Even Amanda kind of bristles at that one. You lose 20 HP. Oh god, no! We're behind! Item. Grade card. Child art. Band-aid. Spelling bee photo. Spelling bee photo. You fumble through your phone browser and you manage to pull up a photo of Amanda winning her 10th grade spelling bee. Wow, congratulations, Amanda. Daisy's getting prepped for her annual spelling bee right now. Hopefully this will be her third win in a row. Yikes, I lose five HP. Daisy sold enough candy bars this year to get the top prize. We're taking it out next weekend. How's that even possible? Amanda could barely get one of those sticky hand things. It's extra powerful, you lose 20 HP. Oh no, we're losing. Brag again. A few months back, Amanda started volunteering at the homeless shelter in our old neighborhood. Ryan loses 10 HP. You don't say. She should talk to Daisy. She actually helped organize a food bank here in Maple Bay. Yeah, Amanda. I'm sure we could find something for you to do. It's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. Dang, he's really got us beat. Boy, it's been such a treat getting to meet you two. Ugh, did he have to add the insult to injury and being such a nice, gracious winner? So I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood. We just moved in. Do you live around here? Hmm. Yeah, we live in that cul-de-sac down to the next coffee shop. What a coincidence, that's where we live too. Small world, yeah. Daisy and I are in that little ranch style house on the corner. I know that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscape. Does this guy have to outdo me at everything? What a lovely place. Hey. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. You'll have to stop by at some point. Yeah, definitely. Bye! Brian and Daisy walk further into the park with Maxwell happily trotting, trotting along the way. You get the feeling that he was trying to one-up us. Mm -hmm. Trying and succeeding. I can't believe that kid's only 10. What was I even doing at her age? Uh, I believe he had a bit of a thing for horses. <laughs> Shame that didn't pan out. Could have majored in comparative horse studies. It's not too late to minor in horse creative writing. Too close to the truth, Dad. <laughs> Let us never speak of the fantastic adventures of Sir Horsington the Brave and an epic an epic in seven parts by Amanda Awesomeness. <laughs> we laugh off the horse epic and walk around the park a bit more enjoying the day. Go to the coffee shop, go unpack, or go take a nap. They talk to each they talk to each other weird, lol. I don't talk to my dad like this. They have a special relationship, Boony Girl, okay? Go to the coffee shop. I gotta get my hands on a nice cup. A hot cup of the old bean juice, or I'm gonna be useless all day. I think we passed the coffee shop on the way here. Maybe we could check that out. Yes, it's called Love and Silliness. Exactly. Let's do it. A lot of silliness. We walk down the street to a coffee spoon. A, li a cute little place on the corner. Hey. Man, this is such a convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. Hmm. What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else and drink coffee on, on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at home on my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't going to come up and sit on the recliner next to me and I won't feel like a little weird about it because technically he's not sitting at my table, but he's very much within my person. Hmm. Dad. And what's etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you go and set it up on the counter because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you just leave it there and you feel your face flush with hotness with shame as you consider the possibility that there is in fact a bin somewhere just out of sight and now you're that jerk who left their mug? Ugh. Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda! <laughs> we walk inside. Hey. Well, hello. Inside the coffee shop is an incredibly warm and inviting. The vinyl records line on the wall and the patrons lounge on the well-worn-in couches. Some cool tunes spin on the record player next to the little stage. Oh, look at the little stage! Hey. Welcome to the coffee spoon, guys. How's it going? I gotta find a good voice for him. I feel like he's kind of like, I can What's with the name? Oh, <clears throat> oh it's uh, that's kind of dumb. Hey, yeah. 
It gets mentioned in the poem I like, and I thought it was a good idea at the time. I suppose now it's still a good idea because, like, this business is still running? Hmm. But people ask me that question all the time, and I give them the same answer every time, and now I'm standing here rambling, and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking, but man, we're in it now, and I can't hey. stop. Hmm. What would it be? I scan the chalkboard menu and am immediately overwhelmed. I'll have, uh, Godspeed, you black coffee. Ice Tegan and Sarah. Chai and word. Get an ice Tegan and Sarah. Oh, we got hearts. Good choice. I don't get it. Oh, it's a pun. Tegan and Sarah are this really awesome Canadian indie band formed in 1995. They were nominated for a Grammy in 2013 and are known for being masters of not only pop hits, but the lyrics. What's that? What's what? The hearts? That means he liked our answer. I think this is one of the dads that we get to date. Hey. Dot, dot, dot. I'm doing that thing again. Hey. But coming right up. Mm. And for you? I'll have a macchiato di Marco, please. Hey. Coming right up. You want that in small, medium, or biggie smalls? Uh, medium? <laughs> Wait, is biggie smalls big or small? I did the wrong voice. Uh, I should change that, shouldn't I? <laughs> Matt sets to making our drinks, and Amanda and I take a seat on one of the couches. What's his deal? Large, we being fat today. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Extra large and double the ice. The ice? I, I don't know. Let the man take his puns. They're cooler bands than you listen to, anyways. Hey! Hey! This cob was cool once. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's alright. Got good lumbar support. You sink right into it. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. <laughs> Amanda nudges huh. me. This place is right next to our house. That guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable talking to other people as you are. You should totally become friends with him. <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. Come on. What do we say about meeting new people? I can't meet new people if I always stay inside and also don't go outside and also don't talk to people. See? We're making progress. Matt sets our drinks down at our table and I have a sip. The ice teagle and... Vera is delicious. I feel like that name just changed on me. Because that's not what it was. Oh. Hi, we're new to the neighborhood and I'm Amanda. And this is my dad, Sir George. Oh. oh, right on. Pleased to meet you both. You ought to come by when my daughter's hanging around the shop. You two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure we'll maybe come in from time to time. Amanda kicks my leg from under the table. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. Hey. You know what? Let me get you guys, your guys' opinion on something. Matt goes to the back and comes out with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. Hey. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe and I need help coming up with a name for it. Well, I think we're gonna have to taste it first so we can uh, get the full flavor profile of, you know, and really appreciate the flavor sensations of Amanda nods vigorously knows this game. Yeah, we need to give that Nana bread a taste if you want us doing free creative labor. I think that would be commensurate with, uh, I taught her well. Uh, we've trained for this day. I was just gonna give you guys free banana bread anyways. Right. Yes, that. Matt starts to say to peace, Amanda and I have to leech out down. This is amazing! Thanks. The secret ingredient is bananas. Hmm. So any ideas? I'm stumped. Well, I think I might only be able to give you dad fan puns, but I'll dad puns, but I'll give it a shot. Banana bread Kennedy's grateful banana bread. Right said banana bread. Oh. Like like right said Fred, but now it's about banana bread, and I think the youngsters would like it despite not getting it. Yeah, the last one. Yeah! Oh, awesome. High five. We did it. I already knew. 
like, I knew what you were gonna pick. Wait, what? That actually has a nice ring to it. Really? Hey, dude. Yeah. Right, said banana bread. Strong decisions. That's art, baby. Oh. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized that it just doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth, and maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. Hey. hey. Enjoy your coffee. Thanks, baby. Hey, yeah. See? Sounds good when you say it. Across the way, a man catches it catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Our eyes meet, just for a moment. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. Who is that? We finish up our drinks and head out. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? I should get back to unpacking. Got a lot on my plate right now. Do you know that moving is one of the biggest sources of stress for adults? It, is it right behind the constant fear that you smell bad and everyone's too polite to tell you? Probably. Do I smell bad? <laughs> Amanda gives me a whiff. You're fine, Pops. Let's go home. I get to work on packing the various boxes around the living room. A couple hours pass and I get some good work done. The washer and dryer unit is both washing and drying, and we can actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. First visitor already? I'll walk over to the door and open it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> a handsome, clean-cut man stands at my door, brandishing a plate of cookies. Hello. Yeah. Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next-door neighbor. Oh, yes. Hi, I'm Sir George. That's what my name is. I saw the moving van and thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter Christine wanted me to let you know she baked them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers, Between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. <laughs> we both shared a laugh. Kids, right? Yeah. Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Huh. Well, thanks for the cookies. Amanda disappears with the cookies. Oh. Amanda, come but And she's gone. <laughs> That's my daughter. Her name's Amanda. She's a charmer. Oh. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Oh. Children in general are just tough. <laughs> I hear that. I mean, they'd have to be something wrong with you to raise more than two. <laughs> I have four kids. What have you done? <laughs> oh. Uh, I meant... <laughs> Don't worry, you didn't mean to. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met and my social life is already in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Uh, yeah, okay. Mm. Is the missus around? Mister, actually, and, er, no, not anymore. He, uh, he died. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's alright. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door, opening it. I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Is, like, everyone single and everyone have daughters? Well. We don't know how many kids, like, what gender his kids are. He has four of them, apparently, but we do know that he does have daughters. And that's three for three. And I don't know how many other people there are. <laughs> hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? Sound that sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. <laughs> we shake hands to seal the deal. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. <laughs> hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk, need to talk about stuff. I'm the youth minister at the church down the street. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. Wink. You look pretty young to me. Just suit yourself. 
And with that, Joseph's gone. He seemed nice. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recovery I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. See, you're already fitting in great. Where'd those cookies go? Aww. They're gone. I'm sorry. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyways? Wow, wow, wow. All the flirtiness. I know, right? All the hearts and the winks. It's almost like Valentine's Day's coming up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, I <laughs> Is it? Yeah, it is. Damn. I know, right? The only reason I know is because it's my birthday. February 14th. I guess that makes it break time. Any ideas? Just it probably wants his plate back. I think we get a ton of good neighbor points if we bring his plate back. We're going to be the best neighbors in this whole cul-de-sac. Ah, okay. I'll try to remember that. Aw. Oh, thank you. We're gonna kick all the other neighbors' butts with kindness. Amanda and I step outside. Huh. This is how I want to be with my kids, if and when I ever have any. Shoot, I'm actually not sure which house is his. Hmm. I'd hazard a guess it's the one with all the well groomed blonde children sitting in the yard. 2 to 92? <laughs> hmm, kick them butts. Good eye, kid. Ah. And remember, we need to make a positive first impression here. Keep it light. We walk up to the kids and wave. I'm gonna guess he has two boys and two girls then. He at least has a girl. Hey guys, is your dad around? They all just stare at us blankly. We just wanted to uh, return his nice plate and thank you for the cookies. Jeez, these definitely are Joseph kids. They all look exactly like him. Huh? They were really good. I mean, I heard they were good. I didn't get to eat any. I chuckle nervously. Huh? Well, okay. We're just gonna set this plate down on the ground real gentle and then back away slowly. <laughs> right, Dad? Right, that's what we're gonna do. The kids eyes bore into us as we scurry away. I can feel their gaze on my back even as we approach our house. I need something to get my mind off those carbon copy kids. I need to rest my eyes. You've been awake for what, three hours? And that's three hours too many. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. Sir George? Hey. Bro! I turn around and I'm greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Well, he is adorable. And hey, look at the baby. Craig? Mm -hmm. Bro. Bro. Oh. Holy wow. I haven't seen Craig in forever. Girl? I think it's a girl. The baby? Yes. You know what? I'll agree. It looks like a girl. It's got the cute little eyes that matches Dan. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, you look great. Bro. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. <laughs> Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Ah. Hello, and hello, cute baby. Mm. Oh, thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. You were right. Right. Her. This is River. Say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. Are you babysitting? Hmm. Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling into exams with bad hangovers and the next we're both fathers. Where have you been, man? I was working out in California, just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding! Amanda and I just moved to the side of town. How's Smashley doing? I, don't know. I mean, Ashley. Ashley is her name. Know. She actually still goes by Smashley, and uh, we got divorced last year. How old is Amanda? I think she's 17 or 18, because she's a senior in high school. Oh, dude. 
I'm so sorry. Oh. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all copacetic. Twins? You have three kids? Hmm. Ain't life something, bro? Right? Keg Stan Craig is a father of three? Hmm. Keg Stan Craig? Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was my old college nickname. He got it because he did a lot of keg stands. Hmm. <laughs> Is that the thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink from the keg? Huh. Right. He was very good at it. Hmm. Uh, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog and I really gotta keep up my heart rate. Brought River along. Or, you know, resistance training. You jog daily? I jog yearly. <laughs> on January 1st, when I promise myself that I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year, but give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Oh. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. <laughs> I don't know. Hey. Come on, it'll be fun. We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days. All right, sure. Sounds great. Mm. Great. Let's get that going soon. I'd better keep moving. See you guys. See you guys. I forgot what it said. Craig gives a little wave and puts his earbud back in and jogs off. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. Hmm. Why's that? Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for anything living, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Amanda, he opened up the new jar of marinara sauce and then he drank it. Like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy. And then I asked him what the hell he was doing. And he said, and I quote, it's basically a smoothie, bro. I mean, technically, he's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's some shit I would do. He jogs. He was jogging. Ah. He's like totally different person. Anyways, we better get home. I have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. Amanda and I flop down onto the couch. Amanda has to shovel or shove some empty boxes out of the way before she does oh. it. Too bad we're gonna be putting this stuff right back in these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Aw, oh, Dad, it's gonna be okay. I'll be fine. I know. I know. It's just... I'm a little girl. It's gonna be weird not having you around. I'll come and visit. I'll text you every day. I'll, ma I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Yeah. Of course. Are you gonna be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. That's why we gotta get the hotties, exactly! You gotta give them something to do! Wink. Okay. A dog! Hey. Forget art school, I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's gonna take? <laughs> Medium-sized dog, a handkerchief around the neck, I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for me to give up my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. <laughs> Amanda laughs. Yeah. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slide through the mail slot. Speaking of college, Amanda darts to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls out, pulls one out and throws the rest back on the floor. Yeah. This is from McGowan College of Arts and Design. Open it. Hmm. But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Hmm. Yeah, it's just like my entire future. Not a big deal. Ah. She takes a deep breath. Rips the letter open with her teeth. I have a letter opener, but okay. Hmm. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application, blah, blah, blah. Um, oh. Regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Arts. Uh. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. Mm. It's okay, I kind of saw it coming. I know I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just want to see portraits or I pull Amanda in for a big hug. Bring it in. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for it, hmm. for sure. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine or are you just saying that? Hmm? I'm fine. Really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her. Huh. Oh, before I forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. Dang, she ruining getting the hotties. I know, right? Big sads. <clears throat> Ugh. So, 
You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool. I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have the place for yourself. Yeah? What are your plans? Quick, think of plans! I am secretly the mayor of this town. Gotta attend the union meeting. I'm going club. <laughs> I'm going clubbing. I'm gonna put on a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. All the all the hottest dance moves: the lawnmower, the sprinkler, the running man. You know, the ones all the kids are doing these days. Ooh. All right, but I'm not gonna come pick you up if you pull anything this time. Not again. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to go to bed, go out and watch the game. Oh, okay, decision time. Uh, should we go to bed or should we go out and watch the game? Big decisions here. The game. Go out or go to bed. Go out and watch the game or go to bed. Watch the game. Alrighty, let's hope it's hockey. We're gonna go out and watch the game. Nice. Mm. Which game? You know, the game. The one that's on tonight. Ugh. The game on TV? At somewhere other than here? Okay, cool. Why you do that? I'm gonna do drugs and commit some light arson with the Emmas. I'm concerned that you're hanging with the wrong crowd. Amanda shrugs. I would have expected you guys to be up to white collar crimes by this point. Maybe money laundering at the least? I'm a street rep, Pops. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? <sighs> yes, Dad. <laughs> Make it sure. I give her a pat on the head. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? Dad. No, making fun of sports is played out. Where's the Emma's? <laughs> Apparently they on the way. <laughs> All right then. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before the Aman before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh, right, Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. Wow, I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone. Well, I'm gonna pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go this way. Cool, okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance, could it be? A bar! <laughs> this seems legit. <laughs> a big, burned-out neon sign hangs above, above tiny dive bar. Kim and Jim? Or <laughs> Jim and Kim's? Huh? Alright, it'll do. The bar is small and dimly lit and the crack of the pool balls sound in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. Your thing, boss. The bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. <laughs> I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, and which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. The Bengals! Ah, oh, it was such a sad, sad, sad game. But anyways. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal. The tiger does cartwheels. I silently cheer my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with the fan of the opposing team. Several people in the bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike, although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. Oh. <laughs> a middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass sidles, settles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close. Hey, sailor. Oh, hello. Ah, good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often. Oh no, I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm Sir George, by the way. Ah. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead, and if they keep this up, they'll win the game with these. Hey. Oh, I love that team. I also love that game, and I love someone who knows their way around balls. <laughs> he does now. <laughs> I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh, ah. buy a gal a drink? You know what? We're gonna buy Mary a drink. 
I almost reluctantly signal the bartender to order Mary another glass of wine. Neil jokes back and forth with Mary, and they're clearly friends. This clearly isn't her first time doing this. She tips her glass at me. I suppose I gotta keep you company now. Oh. So, what do you want to know? Deal. Hmm. Me? I'm a ghost, Sir George. I haunt the hollow halls of Jim and Kim's waiting for my beloved to return from sea. Really? No. Ah. Home girl just loves a drink. <laughs> what else can you tell me about this part of town? Ah. It's quiet, that's for sure. If you want an idyllic little life with white picket fences, this is the place to do it. But every town has its secrets, you know. It takes a sip of drink. It's a little too ominous for my taste. Hey. Would you like to learn some of my secrets? Oh boy. Ah, uh, maybe some other time? Uh. Do it yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close to, in terms of points, a little too close than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from the man at the bar. Go team! It's the brooding man from the coffee spit. He sits alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game. Oh. Join the game? I am now that we're winning. <laughs> I gotta do like a different voice for him, but he's definitely gruff. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I'd say that my team is superior. That's where you're wrong. Since, since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close. Both sides play in their hardest to win, but in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. Raises his in response. A of truce is formed between us. Based on mutual love for the game, he motions the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. How ironic! Thanks, I'm Sir George. Hey. He must be new here. Mary already hit on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Robert chuckles. <laughs> Uh, she's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Iconic. I know, right? Is there actually a Jim or Kim that runs the place? Hey. No, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Hey. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in the world. Uh, okay. You a whiskey fellow or a beer fellow? Beer, but I'll drink most of them. You like shots? I like shots. I love shots. Ooh, shots fired. I don't like them. <laughs> um, I feel like if I want this to go, I want it to. I'm gonna say I love. I like shots. I love shots. I like oh. shots. Thank you. Robert nods to Neil. He serves up two more shots of whiskey. He hands one of them to oh. me. Here's to your health. I take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, and I try my hardest to look tough. Oh. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, Sir George, this guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Compliment his cool leather jacket, compliment his rugged good looks, compliment his hand tattoo. Rugged good looks? I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I go with cool leather jacket, rugged looks, or his hand tattoo? I feel like this one's a double-edged sword here. So we going out with Mary or Robert? <clears throat> I don't know, Robert seems to be my friend. Let's see if we can push this a little a little closer to friendship level. What should we compliment him on to make him our friend? Jacket? Alright, we're going with the jacket. Compliment his cool leather jacket. I like a jacket. Thanks. Been in my family for a long time. Passed down from firstborn to firstborn. First, some would say. Man, this guy's mysterious and cool. Oh. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bar for another round. What are you doing here tonight? My daughter kicked me out of the house, running from my problems, trying to make friends. I feel like he's more of a running from my problems kind of guy. The usual. Oh. oh, I like your style. He gets up. Oh. Be right back, gotta powder my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. We're gonna be besties. <laughs> I guess so. I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like this thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. We definitely going for Robert. Yeah, 100% we're going. 
Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. I live in this cul-de-sac down <clears throat> I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Oh. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get into Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. He stops and he turns to me. Mm. I don't kiss and tell, Sir George. Uh -huh. so are we doing this or what? <gasps> are we doing it? What? I... You know, do you want to come inside or not? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. <laughs> Lay it on smooth, smile and nod. Or no thank you. <laughs> Faints. <laughs> okay, Mr. Robert, that was a little, uh... <laughs> so we swing in this way. <laughs> I mean, our husband passed away, boony girl. We gotta find Amanda, new stepdaddy. <laughs> <clears throat> We're gonna smile and nod because that's how I would probably be in this situation. Let's do it. I follow him up to his door. He fumbles with his keys for a second and unlocks the door, leading me inside. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's too late. We've already gone shy. <laughs> I follow him up to his door. He fumbles with his keys for a second and unlocks the door. Uh, go big or go home. <laughs> Alright, if some other choice pops up, we're going big then. Leading me inside. The moment the door closes behind us, he pushes me up against the wall and kisses me. Grab grabbing my hips. <laughs> Come on. Robert takes my hand and leads me up the stairs into what I assume was his bedroom. But it's so dark, I can't see anything. But Robert's intense expression. He kisses me again and I can hear him shuckling off his jacket. Oh boy, rated R. <laughs> Ah! I comes like, take mine off too. His hands roam down my chest and suddenly he's tugging at my belt. I don't know how far this is gonna go. I was hoping it would just be a cutscene. So if it gets bad, I'll skip over it. But <clears throat> He's tugging at my belt. I, I, uh, I don't normally do this. You wanna stop? Shy. Uh, do you want to stop? No. <laughs> Good. Robert continues to unbuckle my belt and guides me to the bed. Let's have some fun. Okay, all right. It's not gonna be that rated R. It's just a little sexy. Sexy. Wow. His room is atrocious. Sunlight streams in between the slats of the blinds. My head is pounding. I really overdid it last night. Wait a minute. This isn't my house. Or my new house. Can I open my eyes now? Yes, you can open your eyes now. <laughs> da, da, da. Oh, right. Oh, my guy stayed the night. I know, right? I look around for Robert, but I find myself alone. Hello? There's a clatter from the bathroom and the door opens. Robert is fully dressed and grabs his keys. That was, <clears throat> that was fun. Yeah, it was. Oh. You should go. That's certainly not what I was expecting. Well, uh, talk to you mm. later. Robert cracks a smile. Sure, your clothes are over there. there. I hastily get dressed and show myself out. The sun is unbearably bright, and I need to lie down. I start to weigh my ba make my way back home when I suddenly remember. <laughs> Dang, one night stand. <laughs> I saw that coming. <laughs> Amanda! <laughs> I forgot about our daughter! I rush back home and throw the door open. Something smells delicious. Amanda? Uh. Amanda runs out of the kitchen and looks slightly disappointed. Aw uh. oh, man, I was kind of hoping you'd gotten kidnapped. And I was going to have to come rescue you. She's going to ask questions. She is. Are we going to be honest or are we going to like sly around it? <laughs> is she going to be our bestie or should we save her the one night stand experience? I was going to have to come rescue you. No, I uh made a friend at the bar last night and ended up sleeping over at his place. 
I feel like you need to be honest. Well, he is being honest regardless, and you're right, we're gonna be honest. Where are the Emmas? Huh. They left a little while ago. Oh, you guys have fun? <laughs> yeah, we watched some movies. Ate snacks, stole a car. You know, usual sleep stuff. Yep, yep. <laughs> you teens and your larceny. So, this breakfast that's cooking, what's that all about? Mm. Well, there's hash browns and eggs and bacon. Can I? Aww. Yes, you can have some breakfast. Bless you, sweet child. My head throbs. Ugh, I gotta do something about this hangover. Amanda, your loving father might have overdone it last night. Oh, somebody's hungover. Father of the gear. You wouldn't happen to have any aspirin yes. or... I've got just the thing. Hang on. Ah. Amanda runs to the fridge and pulls out a jar of pickles. Amanda, what? Ah. Drink this. The pickle juice? Hey. Yep, that's what I used once. Uh, I would assume someone would use. I would also assume that it works pretty well. Hmm. Pickles? Who would have known pickle juice would cure hangovers? This is also a video game. I don't know if this is canon. Although I've never tried it before. And wouldn't try it, obviously. Who raised you? Amanda Ann. Give her a stern, yet yeah, reside side eye. Who raised you? Um, you did? Right. Um, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I've been told that way too many times in my life. <laughs> you got it. This better work. I s down a sip of the pickle, or the tart juice. No, no, more than that. Way more than that. Ah. I mean, I assume. Huh. Watch it, you. <laughs> I drink more pickle juice and help myself to the delicious breakfast that Amanda has graciously allowed me to partake in. After inhaling some hash browns and dunking several pieces of bacon into runny egg yolk, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Amanda grabs her backpack and keys. Well, I gotta get to class. Don't forget the meeting with Mr. Vega, okay? He said it was important. Love ya. I'll be there. Knock him dead, kiddo. <laughs> Always do. We do our secret handshake and she's off. I get a little work done at home before I glance at my watch and see that it's almost time for the meeting. I hop in the shower, change clothes, and head on my way. She's still a little hungover. I am still a little hungover. <laughs> we get in with the English teacher. One night stand round two. <laughs> That's only for Robert, okay? We, we have to save ourselves for Robert. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully no one will notice. I check my watch and I'm relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approaching for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily eyed, heavily lined eyes. Sigh. Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? Tie up, fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk you sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low rent <laughs> Garrett way is standing. Yep, yep, saw that too. <laughs> ready, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Lucien, don't you have third period to get to? I find Mr. Vega. Mm -hmm. Wow! Now I'm officially 10 minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Hmm. You must be Sir George. This period is almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. Mr. Vega leads me in, and I take a seat in one of the comically small student desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Ah. All right, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Selling's Catcher in the Eye? Oh. Or the Rye? Yes, Colin? He's a hunk. I know, right? Like, that mustache, though. <laughs> Colin stands up, does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make the fart oh. noise. The whole class erupts into laughter. Hmm. 
All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Oh. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that, for sure, but no. Beard. <laughs> uh, you know what? You're right. Beards are cool. How please? Okay, the first guy we met has a beard, though, but I wasn't really feeling him. He was kind of overly, like, my daughter's better than yours. And we don't have that. Our daughter is better. Amanda is the best. <laughs> now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that bell for the end of the period rings and all the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Huh? Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Hmm. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me in size. Hmm. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? <sighs> Both, you know. <laughs> Budget cuts. Right. Ah. Thanks so much for coming in. I'm probably going to change his voice a little. Bear with me. <clears throat> Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Ah. Please, call me Hugo. Eh. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as a, I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? <sighs> Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind, and I'm not completing- and she's not completing assignments, and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk this up to senioritis, but- this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. I don't know. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? You know what? We're gonna be honest. We- well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Ah. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you as a- values you a great deal would appreciate your guidance if she keeps heading down this road i know how important art school is to her and i would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves i'll make sure to talk to amanda thanks for letting me know hugo hey anytime on my way out i stop thinking for a moment i turn to hugo hey hugo hmm? yes they ever catch that rye hmm? dot, dot, dot. yes oh we got some hearts I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such, such a positive, or such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. Ooh, Amanda, hello. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Hmm. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops into the passenger seat. <laughs> So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually gossiped about our celebrity crushes. She talked about Marie Batelli the whole time. Mario, sorry. It was a very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Can we make some fun at home? Let's go to the mall food court because no kid would resist that. Does that sound good to you? Huh? Yeah, sure. Buy the mall. Jeez, can a dad take his daughter to the mall? Hmm. Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sounds like a deal to me. Hmm. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Mm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, is that it's good to share. Love you. I thought that. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? This is, n this is not how to go about it. I know, right? Like, don't do it. Mm. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Eh? Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to the stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me to know about it. Frustrating. 
Uh, I heard Emma R's going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Oh, that's what it is. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Huh? Mandy keeps texting. That was a laugh. What's so funny? Huh. Uh, it's a... I don't think you'd get it. Okay. Look at those eyes! How could you say no to your dad? Who you texted? Huh. Noah? Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Huh. Yep. Do you like Noah? Whoa! What? No! Dad! Ugh. I can't believe you would... Oh. Dad! I mean, jeez. Why would you... Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry. I was just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. <laughs> oh, what a dad thing to do. <laughs> I know. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Hmm. Okay, okay. Jeez. It's going well. Oh, good talk. Love you, kiddo. <laughs> she leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. Do the mall then. But what a way to start off our day at the mall together. <laughs> you should have saved that for the ride home. <laughs> or maybe just a different way in general. Well, my friend turned into more than friends, so... I think she likes Noah. Hey, I know a guy. What else? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> we arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at the group of loitering teens. Oh. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Yeah. Hell yeah! Language, Missy. Hmm. Heck yeah! Better. Mm. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar, bread with cheese on it, or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing me some nachos or sharing some nachos? She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. Bread with cheese. We order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. Ah. <laughs> These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious. Mm. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So, oh. huh. this has been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Uh. Or, although I feel like he would say, can you explain memes to me? <laughs> Sigh, which meme? All. All the memes. Ugh. Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. Uh. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside no, jokes it's... shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is, by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all of us used to have already done the joke to death. Oh. And what's worse is that, what's worse than that is movies and TVs and video games will try to jump in on the meme train, and but just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out, so it just dates it and it isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? Ugh. Dad, please. <laughs> anyway, changing the subject, where to now? Wanna go to that goth store? Mm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as an anti-establishment despite being the exact representation of the establishment. I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and, and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements in the 70s and 80s. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. Oh, that one? Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. There it is. You can still see it. See the outline, kind of. I'm so proud. <laughs> speech. Amanda. Yeah. Speech. 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 All right. I'll do it if you stop chanting. <laughs> Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate a historic moment that would forever shape 
history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Awesomeness... Awesomeness... <laughs> had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. Huh. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and be gone to buy a rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over the display of my chemical romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains along our possessions. Oh. Thank you. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping. Slowly at first, and s then faster, more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my All head. Right. Oh, hey, chain wallets. LOL, what is your character? My character is our daddy. It's our Sir George Awesomeness. But Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts and trying to find something of interest in itself. Not much for a dad to look at in Dead Goth and beyond. Peruse the band t-shirts, look at ironic mugs, check the clearance bin for hot deals. I feel like that's a very dad thing to do is check the clearance bin. There's a big cardboard box of marked down items. I'm pretty sure $4 for purple eyeliner is a good deal. I think. I wonder if I, if I would look good in purple eyeliner. Dot dot. Hell yes I would. Look, this is very important. I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored-looking cashier with pink hair. <clears throat> I can see that. I don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Oh, my. Listen, when I brought... <clears throat> Listen, when I bought this online, the website says, says that this blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Leave me if I give you a coupon. Hmm. Is our manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. Huh. I see. Well, it would seem that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Sir George is the one we play. <laughs> yes, the dad. Whatever, dude. The man whirls around and storms out. His literal contra coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they're Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. I made a toss up to me with a t shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Aww. Hey, Dad Tron 5000. Yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's the only one this time. Amanda plops a shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier. I love her hair. Huh. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what's the ga guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard and worries she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's good the conversation is Make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. <laughs> oh, bowls is in like multiple? That's my kind of night. Oh, cool. Long Hole Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers is on. Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yes. They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but they're also hunting ghosts. Huh. Also, the trucks are haunted. <laughs> This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint, Dogbone, the twin brother, truck driving, and ghost hunting duo find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no! The ghost done got control of the truck! I can't steer them... <laughs> steer on them their damn ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter and try to communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die! <laughs> Ah! Almost got it! If you listen carefully, it sounds like they're saying you're going to die! Mm -hmm. That's because we're about to die, you! This is art. <laughs> the episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterwards, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Also, thank you so much, Computer Guy, for the explanation. Oh, sees we are asleep. Morning, sleepyhead. 
Five more minutes. You have never, ever let me have five minutes before, so get up. Fine. Ugh. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. It is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and a desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. <laughs> so, you excited for the cookout today? Excited to beef up my grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited. If there's food, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to parties. Huh? Yeah, those are bad. Which means there's more for me. Huh? Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Ah. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Mm -hmm. The social butterfly. Well, we better get s we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. <sighs> what? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early, just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. <laughs> I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs waft through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie plate down on the table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph! I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, open arms... Oh, arms open wide. <laughs> Welcome! I am so glad you two are here! And you brought veggies! Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Hi. Oh. This is Christian and Christy, they're twins. Ah. They stare creepily and say nothing. Ah. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where is Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib? Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? Oh. Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Mm. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish to bed? Hey. I'll have to go look for him. Mm. What? You'll have to. <laughs> Just takes a moment to regain his composure. <laughs> Mary, this is our new neighbor, Sir George, and his daughter, Amanda. Mm -hmm. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to attend to. I love her. Nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh god, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All of the guys are really excited to be. Amanda and I mill around trying to find some food spread out on the table. I pick us some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked beans. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. Ugh. Come on, Dad. Who are we going to party with when I... Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? We're going to party with Robert. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have his number on speed dial. <laughs> who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do the pleasantry... Dad. Ugh, they're gonna talk about weather. <sighs> Go, do it. Make friends. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shows me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party, and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Oh, dang, Robert's here? Oh, didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit in Dead Goth and Beyond? Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second, all these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I'd better investigate. We're gonna save Robert till last because I feel like we're on a little bit of a icy moment. Oh. Um, let's talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig because I feel like we had the best interactions with them. Um. I feel like we got a very handsome trio going on. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig's look on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. 
Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. I gotta get back into the woods. <laughs> Periods in art only exist because they're unique byproduct of the social political climate of the time and place. I try to take something like, say, the Rocco period and compare it to the postmodernism in America. You're completely disregarded in the context in which work of art is created. Hello, is that baby even real? I feel like the baby lives there. Oh, 100%. That is, like, part of his character. Now <laughs> that poor baby. Poor River. <laughs> Matt and Hugo seem to be busy, so busy talking that they don't even notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Talk to Craig. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. How'd resistance training go the other day? Oh. Hey, little River here is a great cheerleader, aren't you, tiny bro? Craig grabs River's arms and waves them around. Mm. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. She must be a handful at that age. Mm. Oh, they always are. Oh. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arms again and waves mm. them around. Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. Mm. I guess that'll end. I never get too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Almost done. There's still a few odds and ends to take care of before I can really call myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. Mm. We did livable throughout the entirety of college. Yeah, my goal was for Amanda to live in the sort of life that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a palate cleanser between different types of pizza. She still does, though. <laughs> hey, she takes after her dad. So, George, how are you liking... <clears throat> Sir George, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Oh. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda and Daisy and the other young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass picking weeds and we little flower crowns. Pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to hey. us. What is this? What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in hey. it. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Hey. Oh, look at him! Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Nope, but you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Hey. <laughs> Sir George, this is my daughter. Hello! Uh, yeah, this is Sir George, by the way. Uh, Wall Lobster. This is us, this is who we play. I'm Carmen Sita. <laughs> Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends! Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool Bertista from the coffee shop? And my old college friend? And, uh, your teacher? Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. Didn't realize we were neighbors. Oh. Yep. You still gonna give me that overdue term paper? Oh. <laughs> Great seeing you. Amanda finger guns are right out of the conversation like a champ. You learn the finger guns move from me. I'm very proud. Oh. Definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? What? Hugo looks around the party. He m must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. What? Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega! Are you smoking? Oh yeah, finger guns. <laughs> pa pow. Pa pow. Oh. Hmm. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of a cigarette and then flicks it into a gutter. <laughs> Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Man, I do not envy Hugo. Last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly burned down half the yard. And the barbecue we had before that... And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread into my lawn and burned down half of my yard, too. <sighs> Hugo walks, walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Oh, my God. Hmm. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that, Sir George. This is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hand shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? The matter? Oh. Ernest? Okay, okay, I'm in 8th grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Er, yeah, good for you. Oh. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for failing economics. <laughs> for the failing economics. 
our economy. <laughs> Ouch. Eh. Ernest! Oh, yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was... That was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. Ah. I'm, I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritative dad. Clearly resents me. I mean, I think as a dad and teacher, that's about as authorita authoritarian as you can get. Mm. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. Oh. See, that right there, you can't say that. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? Huh. I, uh... I, I don't know. Hey. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once raged against and accept our fate as fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18. She still thinks I'm cool. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point! Um... Oh, that's supposed to be the low point. I see your point. <laughs> as much as we all want it, I don't... As much as we all want it, I don't think it's important to be cool dads as it is to be a good dad. We all can't be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me in earnest. Mm -hmm. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Mm. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when we won't be like that. As college, when this happens. Hey, uh... Don't let us eat up your time, Sir George. Go on and meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Oh my lordy! Are we going to talk to Joseph and Damien? Are we going to talk to Robert and Brian? I kind of want to save Robert till last, because like... We got some spiciness going on with him right now. <laughs> Give it a second. We're going Joseph. I spot Joseph chatting with the guy from the dead goth and beyond by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. Oh. So I'm, cur so I'm curious. Can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Yeah. He's a bit not nice. <laughs> Yeah. Huh. Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood, and it complements the crimson interior perfectly. Mm. It's definitely an uh, interesting choice. Ah. Thank you. I am very proud of my boat. Mr. George, I was just having a conversation with Damien here about this aesthetic design decision. Damien regards me up and down with a warm but critical eye. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I think I saw you in Dead Gotham Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. I, I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth lifestyle very seriously. And to be caught in a ruse such, by such a corporation as Dead Gotham Beyond was profoundly frustrating and I hope you know that while my anger may have been justified, it was no way for such a gentleman to act. It's okay, man. Don't tell me. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yeah, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I took to Dead Goth and Beyond. Oh. Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the goth lifestyle? I think for a second. I look over at Amanda, who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. What? Hey, Amanda! Would you consider yourself no. goth? <laughs> Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under any one specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as twee hipster with some normcore leanings. Bats are cool, though. Ah, uh, Are you even enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. Hey. Amanda walks up to the conversation. Ah. I also like The Lost Boys a lot. Really good movie. Does that count as goth? Ah. 
That it would, my dear. I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting. Damien Bloodmarch, at your service. Damien finishes the sentence, a flourish and a bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. That is so cute! Eh? Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. Ah. My, do you know, my, do you know how to treat a lady? Ah. Hello, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's twins appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? Whoa. <laughs> hey! Won't you come play with us? Hmm. Uh, come play with us. Forever. <laughs> Guys, enough with the creepy tinge, Dick. We talked about ah. this. Christian and Christy slowly back away. <laughs> Where do you think they got that from? Uh, Mary pops in the conversation, wine in hand. Uh, I, uh, don't know. Mary takes a long sip of the wine. Hmm. I think I might have tapped over a Veggie Tales VHS with The Shining. Who knows? Takes another sip of her wine. Hmm. Where's Chris? Ugh. Wasn't he with you? Oh. You had him a moment ago. Uh. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to me. Hmm? Ain't my first time to the rodeo. It's my fourth. Ugh. I've squeezed four little <laughs> sweetheart. You do me a favor, please invite Krish. That would be great. Oh my god. I'm sure he's fine. Yeah. Mary. Ah. Okay, jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go home now? Hmm. Ah, Lucian. Have I introduced you to Sir George yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. Huh. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. Mr. Christiansen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? Oh. Coming right up, bud. Are you a vegetarian? Yep. Hmm. Make that two veggie burgers. Do you know some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They described carnivorous type people as blood lappers. Dad, that's really interesting, Damien. Just turns to the girl, just a hint of a tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeve. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. Looks like the bottom of an anchor. Oh, is that a tattoo? Yeah. Yep. It wasn't always a youth pastor, you know? That's so cool. Want to see mine? What? what? Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelets revealing a lopsided 666 in, ba in black ink. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian! We'll talk about this later. Mm. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Oh. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful, though. That number carries weight. Man, Joseph is way cooler youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with the Bible. I wonder what he did before preaching. We have to talk to Robert now. I walk over to Robert and Brian, who are chatting over drinks, determined not to be weird about what happened that night. I hope Robert feels the same. Hey, guys. Ah. Sir George! <clears throat> Sir George, how the heck are you? Settling into the neighborhood, all right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. <laughs> That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50 in there. The game looks great and high def. Oh, boy. Oh. Sir George, have you met Robert yet? Yes. I believe we met. Briefly. <laughs> Keep my name out your mouth. Look, we're talking about this Robert. We're not talking to... Oh, my God. You guys can't see Robert's face. Hold on. Alrighty, I've switched my camera. We're talking about this Robert. Right here. Just for a minute. LOL. <clears throat> dot, dot, dot. Mm. Hey. Yep, looks like me. Well, I don't know if you want to know what we've done with Robert so far. <laughs> oh, Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Oh. Robert robotically extends a hand. I shake it as he stares unblinkly into my eyes. Oh god, what does it mean? How's it going? Uh -huh. 
It's good. Or, <clears throat> it's good. Robert focuses on the whiskey he's holding. He takes a long sip. <laughs> Great! Look at my friends becoming friends! Us dads gotta stick together, you know. Uh-oh. Well, Lobster, you may not want to stay for this, lol. <laughs> You're gonna do some unspeakable things. <laughs> Us dads? Robert has a kid? Oh, I didn't know you had kids. Oh. Robert continues to stare at me. Jesus, does this guy ever blink? Yep. That, that, that. Oh, that's cool. Oh. We stand in incredibly uncomfortable silence for several moments until... We gotta get off this haunted truck! Oh no! The ghost locked the doors! <laughs> Daisy and Amanda run up to us. Thank God. <laughs> Quick, hit the emergency escape button! But trucks don't have an emergency escape button. Uh, then hit the brakes, I guess. And then we'll just get out of the truck. The imaginary truck? Anyways, we're safe from the ghost, but how will we ever survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although, I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. Wait a second. Are you guys... Playing long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers? Yeah! I mean, and I love that show. <laughs> it's the best, especially that episode where Callum hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient curse urn and sending the spears after him. Yeah, it's such a great quality reality TV show. Or television. Alright, Daisy, I found us a couple bugs. They're gonna make great meal. Lots of protein. Gonna keep us from starving out here in this harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over the. Daisy. It's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. <laughs> Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table to eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find kindling for a fire. Okay. Yeah. But not an actual fire. Where did Robert go? Excuse you? Because we're playing pretend? Right. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. I turn my attention back to the conversation. But wait, where did Robert go? Let's give him the party and finally find him in the corner talking to Mary. Does he, not, does, does he not want to talk? Uh. Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I snap out of my Robert-induced haze. Sounds about right. I guess Amanda just sort of has this way with kids. Oh. That's, that's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids for age. It's nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can actually have a regular friendship after all. Really? Uh. She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teacher says she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. Heh, <laughs> there it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age, too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She's... She bit people, too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> kids. <laughs> right? Gotta love them. You're required to by the law. Oh. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little playdate for them. Yeah, that'd be nice. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellows. <laughs> and without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula into the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I have ever seen. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? Working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. After one after another, the dads take notice in the crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Oh. You probably didn't know this, Sir George, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. Yeah. He's ungrillable. Hey. <laughs> I tried to get on his level, but I just can't catch up. Hey. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. Huh. Mustard, we keep talking about this. We can't just appreciate the artist. I... Never seen him make a mistake. Oh. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. Uh. Please stop! All the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns in yeah. unison. Alright guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Nice. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Mm. Kinda nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're 
single dad trying to raise a kid. Mm -hmm. Oh, totally not his voice. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're really gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to get into babysitting games, she'll really make a killing. Mm. Hey, why don't you add us all on Dad Book? Dad Book? <laughs> yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with you. We're all on it, so if we need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Yeah. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the BBQ goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmen Sita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Huh. Pretty fun party, don't you think? I mean, I got a burger in me. I felt like it was a networking event. She could have been playing Paranormal Ice Road Truckers. You and Daisy seemed like you were having a way better time than I was. Yeah. Because we were. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, at least she met some of the other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dad Book. Maybe I will. If I ever figure out how social media works. Da -da -da. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Oh. Man and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for this evening? <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh, mm. is that okay? Of course. Just keep me posted and be home before midnight. Mm. You got it. Be careful. Mm. I will. Make good choices. Mm. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Mm. Dad, you're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No, I've never done that, and I will never do that. Mm. Okay, do you have plans tonight? I, uh... My plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm gonna... Work on some stuff. See how long I can sleep for? Throw a party. Uh, work on some stuff. You know, dad stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great, see you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. I pop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine. Mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Champ. Chapman. It looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potato. I'd love to be able to cook like that. Although I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food of real nutritional substance. And Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind and also, one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was about. Was a lot of yelling. <laughs> like, glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo. You good? I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand. I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now. In which case, I hope she doesn't respond soon. Because I definitely taught her better than to text to drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I've earned it after a long day of socializing. I check my watch again, and then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, see, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no. It's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes, now I'm really worried. The episode of Gavin Chapman's Meet Hell are not only... Are not only not... <laughs> such waiting my, for my anxiety, but possibly... Ex separating it with all the all the yelling so i keep pacing around the house waiting for her to come back why didn't i find out where she was going who was she even with why don't i know any of her friends phone numbers why do why don't i even know any of her friends full names who's emma p i decided to send her another text amanda please text me and let me know you're okay i can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her oh thank god it's her amanda opens the door and shuffles in Finally. Finally! She's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Up. Sweet, sweetie, thank god you're safe. Aww. Uh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my text? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Huh. Oh, whoops. Guess I didn't see those. Just to walk to her room. Amanda Ann! Hmm. Oh, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after curfew and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Hmm? Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? We're going to hit her with the I was scared because we were. 
weren't responding, and it was just, it was just like when your dad, I have to stop myself from tearing up. Whoa. Oh, dad, I didn't mean to. I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. It really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Oh. But, <sighs> all right, I'm gonna go to bed now. Amanda closes her door to her room. I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not gonna be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey. I thought about what you said last night. I should have texted you. I said I was gonna do it, and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. Well... Sorry for freaking out on you. You're an adult now, and I shouldn't have gotten so worked mm -hmm. up. Team Awesomeness? Team Awesomeness. Oh my god, that was a perfect last name, computer guy! Look at that! Team Awesomeness. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them? I already did. Yes! Bless you! Amanda scarfs down the eggs in time and takes it to the wash pan. I'm <laughs> welcome. I called it. Yes! Huh. Alright, I'm off for school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. Mm. What? What's dad book? Uh. It's a social media platform. Wait, hmm. what? What's a social media platform? <laughs> dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda, I'm an old man. I can't put it together a dad book profile on my mm. own. Alright, I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Ugh. Amanda spends the next couple minutes setting up my profile on dad book. Which, as it turns out, is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. Alright, Pops. We gotta fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. Ooh! Custom creations! On a Friday night, you are most likely to... Polish and sort my coin collection, Netflix and Grill Baby, fall asleep watching the historical channel, torment my children with dad puns, sink into a blissful oblivion sleep. Um... I feel like we're gonna torment Amanda with dad puns. Because it wouldn't be the History Channel, it would be Ice Road Truckers. Yeah, dad puns. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? A trusty grill, the lost shaker of salt, cast away on DVD for instructional purposes. A boat, obviously. I don't need anything. My survival skills have trained me for the day. My trusty grill. What are your turn ons? Strong dad arms, tennis shoes with long white socks, a well manicured lawn, street smarts, top tier grillsmanship, comfortable with crying. <laughs> Strong dad arms. What did you want to be when you grew up? Technical writer for manuals and instructions. Instructionals. Salty boat camp. Salty boat captain. Pro skater who is also an astronaut. A good father. The president of space. Ah, oh, a good father. President of space. <laughs> What's your favorite movie genre? War documentaries. Sean Connery's entire film filmography. Anything on Laserdisc, romantic comedies, whatever will make me cry, old comedies that haven't aged well. <laughs> um, let's do old comedies that haven't aged well. What's your ideal date? Napping together, doing a thousand piece puzzle together, eating a healthy dinner at 4pm, trying to geocache but getting hopelessly lost, arson, being emotionally... What do you never leave home without? A sensible cardigan, my sick vape, my book of word jumbles and a pen, my cool knife, my crippling low self-esteem. <laughs> I frequently forget my phone, keys, wallet at home sometimes. Um, uh, a sensible cardigan. I spend a lot of time thinking about conspiracy theories. How proud of my child I am. Potential ends of the world. Will I ever be able to love myself as much as I love my grill? When I can next get a cup of coffee. Lawnmower modifications. Cup of coffee. 
Oh, ah, complete. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day in here just looking at people's profiles. You should message one of them, or more than one of them. All these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. Manny gives me a hug. Go get him, dad. Welcome. Oh, goodness. You've got dads. Oh my god, look at all the dads. Hi, Sir George, it's me, your dear old friend from way back in the day, Dad Manda. I'm delighted to see you've signed up for Dad Book. They've recently added this exciting new messenger service, so you may find yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself. Take care to not miss them. Bye. Oh, Amanda, is that you? What are you doing on Dad Book? Why, Sir George, I never... <laughs> We've known each other since business school. How could you possibly confuse me for your amazing and talented and easy to buy things for daughter? Though, I of course am flattered. You should buy Amanda more things. Amanda, you know I didn't go to business school. I barely even managed to get my degree. Wait. No. Wow. I didn't say that. You never heard that. This is gold. It was such a, I was such a great student, I swear. I graduated at the top of my class because I worked hard and ate all my vegetables. Totally holding on to this for later. Wait, do you even remember what I majored in? That's the thought. I declined to comment. Cool. Conversation ended. Great. Awesome. Ah! <laughs> I kind of want to message Robert. I want to see where this is going to go. But I'm also very interested in Hugo. He seems to be very cool. Um, this just kind of got like that little edgy side to him. Or, like, definitely something, like, with his wife is going on. But, like, he's the only one that has a wife. Like, the rest of these guys, from my knowledge, are single. He's the only one with a wife. So, I kind of want to dig into that one. But, I'm going to go with Robert. Oh, we can just look at their profiles. Oh, we'll go we'll start with Craig. And then, once we look through all the profiles, then I'm probably going to end stream. But, I want to look through all of them first. Craig Gahan. Dad of three, business entrepreneur and fitness enthusiast. Juggling work, family, and fitness is a tough gig, but someone's got to do it. On Friday nights, you're most likely to get one last good cardio session in. If you had one thing to take with you, it would be a box of energy bars. What are your turn-ons? A sub-six-minute mile. What did you want to be when you grew up? Beer Pong World Champion. What is your favorite movie? Buddy Cop Movies Forever. Ideal date, scaling a huge dangerous mountain for fun. You ever leave home without an extra tube of energy gel? And spent a lot of time thinking about my mild time used to be so good. What happened? Have I peaked? Oh, we don't have any heart. Oh, hold oh yes, yeah, safe. Back. We don't have any hearts here. Avid music enthusiast, passionate coffee drinker. You can find me most days selling bean juice over at the Coffee Spoon. Or hanging out at the park with my amazing daughter. Hit me up about 80s no wave music. Friday nights are perfect for my cold brew setup. One drip at a time, baby. One thing in a desert island is fine tunes to pass the days away. Turn ons are multi instrumentalist. Grew up to be a bartista or barista. He wanted to be a bartista barista when he grew up, weirdly enough. What is your favorite movie genre? Shit with subtitles. <laughs> I feel that. What's your ideal date? We go to the animal shelter and seriously consider adopting a cat. Oh. But what do you never leave home without? My headphones, both in ear and over ear, just in case. I spend a lot of time thinking about where did writing commas and the song titles come from and where did it go? Did we all just agree that that was a bad idea? Matt Stella. Brian. Hey, I'm Brian. I spend most of my days hanging out with my awesome daughter and thinking up all the ways to, all the new ways to grow things. If you like fishing, then we'll get along. Friday nights, see just how slowly I can cook a piece of brisket. Um, take with him a fishing pole to the desert island. Turn on's a keen understanding of steak cuts. Um, he wanted to be a fireman. Um, favorite movie genres is romantic comedies. What's your ideal date? Deck building. What do you never leave home without? My portable fishing pole. I spent a lot of time thinking about how my daughter is smarter than I am. Say Robert for last. How do I? How do you do? I finally decided to join this information superhighway. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I will try my best to understand. I love long strolls through graveyards and spending time with my son. If you would ever like to chat about the latest in Victorian fashion, the inevitability of our own demise, or black cats, please send me a letter. 
On Friday nights, you're most likely to listen to true crime podcasts while I taxidermy my newest specimens. Um, Take to a desert island is a coffin. Turn-ons are pronouncing Bosom correctly. What did you want to be when you grew up? A bat? Favorite music genre? Foreign art house horror? Ideal date is... It's night and we're at an industrial dark wave club in Berlin. The music drums to the beat of our hearts. What do you never leave home without? An upside down cross. And spend a lot of time thinking about mortality. So, Hugo. Middle school teacher, high school teacher, writer of scholarly articles on 18th century literature and various esteemed publications. Here to tell me that my son put a cherry bomb in your trash? I know, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Friday nights, brew some strong tea and paint my man paint my miniatures um, take with him a remembrance of things past by Marcel Proust turn-ons or muscles uh, what did you want to be up a movie star favorite movie is documentary on art history ideal date is he to read a different book on opposite sides of the couch and a couple of silence never leave home without my glasses and I actually forgets them a lot been a lot of time thinking about that I worry that people who are against e-readers are more in love with the idea that books than actually read. Joseph voted Maple Bay as number one youth minister for five years running, living in my hometown with my beautiful wife and her four amazing kids. Not in church, you can catch me out on the open water sailing, setting sails on the seas of adventure. I love playing guitar and crushing my kids at Candyland. <laughs> Friday night, lead the community in a fun mixer. I had one thing to take with him would be my six string. Turn ons is his loving wife. Or grew up to be a ship captain. Your movie genre is feel good movies. Ideal date is lovely night on the town with my wife. What do you ever what do you never leave home without? My good book. And spend a lot of time thinking about how I can be a better man, husband, and father. Jensen. He named his kids Dirty. And Robert Small. When the internet gains sentience and decides to destroy us all, you'll know it'll use this information against us, right? Friday nights are most likely to make a deal in an alleyway, have it go badly. Who's the cop? Was it Giacomo? I trust Giacomo. If you had one thing to take with you, it'd be a gun. What are your turn-ons? Don't talk to me. What did you want to be when you grew up? A grifter? Favorite movie, Janya. Italian neorealism? Ideal, great. Ideal date is grave robbing. What do you never live home without? At least four knives. And I spend a lot of time thinking about you ever really look into a rabbit's animal's eyes. Uh, I shouldn't jump into this. We should back to it. Can I back out? Oh god, no! I've already picked it! It's too late! <laughs> Robert was pretty nice. A little odd, but nice. And ruggedly handsome. We should hang out. I type a message to him on Dadbook. Hey, Robert. Good seeing you again at the cookout. Wanna grab a drink? I sit there for a couple seconds hoping he message me back. Uh, hey, it says that he read my message. I anxiously wait for a response. Watch cat videos on the internet. I sit, start down the rabbit hole of cat videos and Robert quickly vanishes from my mind. I didn't realize how long I've been doing this, but by the time I, I watch maybe my 30th cat video, Robert pops, up, pops back up into my head. I jump over to Dad, but you see if he responded yet. Nothing. Well, I guess the guy's busy. Uh, we should have known he's a real mean guy. Might as well make the best of my day. Get up and walk to the living room and sit down and turn on the TV. I'm gonna save. And we're gonna go back to the title. I saved. I made sure to save. That was quite the adventure. I have been waiting to play this for so long and I'm just so excited. Yeah, director's cut. Alrighty, well, <laughs> that was so interesting, but I am going to go ahead and end it here. So I hope all of you had a wonderful time helping me design the dad, uh, Miss uh, Sir George Awesomeness. 
and all of the wonderful dates that we went on, not to mention uh, meeting Robert and the tales that led after that, because my goodness, I wasn't expecting it to get that crazy. <laughs> but i am gonna get off of here so thank you guys so much for watching we'll save you a seat i'll see you guys next time much love raquel